You must recover all the energy immediately, Mega Man. But where is Dr. Wiley? That's a good question. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wiley. Welcome, human listener, to Human Podcast, Half Glass Gaming. I am Robot Julian, joined as always by Made of Flesh, Mandy. Hi. Blood and Guts, Josh. Robot Josh. And also, Immortal Reverend. I am, I am the Reverend. I am the goddess of holy wrath and bullshit, so I am not mortal. But with that said, welcome to another great episode! So, I'm looking at uh, a PlayStation controller... And it looks pretty awesome, and I'm kind of jealous. I recently went out and bought the the uh, 20th anniversary PlayStation controller, which is just a PS4 controller, but it's the color of the original PS1 mm-hmm. controller. I love it so much. And the PS1 was probably my favorite gaming console of all time. Mm-hmm. And whole, just looking at the thing and seeing its glorious dull gray color like brings me so much joy. Yeah, plus the uh, PS uh, old PS1 logo on the home button I think really drives it home. That's pretty awesome. The color yeah. really uh, delineates the uh, era from which it's trying to mimic. Pretty awesome. Mandy, you got one too, don't you? I did. Man, the prices of controllers these days, I tell you. We got them on sale. Mm-hmm. I've been eyeballing that controller uh, since the the gray PS4 console came out, and, and nobody nobody got one because they printed such a small run. But they released the controllers mm-hmm. to the masses, and it went on sale, and I was like, I'm, I'm doing it. So they released a gray one that looks the, the same color scheme? Yeah, they released a, a console. For the, the anniversary? Yeah. yeah, I guess I wasn't aware of it um, because I, I opted out of getting a new console when they first came out. And, and then later you sold your soul for, for right. one, so you right. didn't even have to buy it from a store at all. No, because well, what I wanted to do was buy myself enough time to do a, a slew of horrendous things that really sullied my soul. No, that makes sense. You, I mean, lowered, it, you lowered the value of your soul down to about $400. About $400. Like, I better get yeah. get rid of this thing. I better I... get this out the door, otherwise I'm going to be stuck <laughs> with a Wii U. <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, I got a Wii U. It's collecting dust. Okay. Mario Maker. Yeah, I've been playing. I've been playing Mario Maker lately, hmm. and it's it's been li- literally. I had to wipe the dust off of my <laughs> my gamepad before yeah. I before I played Mario Maker. But my thing is that I'm trying to make really super difficult levels, mm-hmm. and you don't say. Uh, they show you the percentage of people who have played your level who have beaten it, mm-hmm. and I was like looking through my my uh, notifications, and I was like, seventeen percent of people who played this level have beaten it, and I was like, what? That's way too high. <laughs> and so I proceeded to make a super deviously difficult level, and I think that one has a completion percentage of like three percent. Yeah, <laughs> Josh makes these super hard levels, and he's like, Mandy, Mandy, play this level. And I'm like, no, Josh, I don't want to. And he's yeah. like, what an unsupportive girlfriend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then I'll play it and die a bunch and he just laughs at me. Yeah. Well, actually, I just saw a video of uh, a guy that remade Mega Man 1 in Mario Maker. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you have the Mega Man costume in Mario Maker. Yeah. yeah. Basically, each level, I mean, it's as good as it's going to get as far as like the layout um, and the items that he can use, you right. know, but... Um, I've only played it briefly, but if you recognize the level layout. You've only played Mega Man 1 a little bit? What an unsupportive podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do got to say that I, I thank you for uh, gifting me um, the Mega Man collection that's on the PS4. Yeah, for podcast listeners, I gifted Julian the Mega Man Legacy collection for PS4 because I felt it was a fundamental part of his digital PS4 library. I don't get to play with the cool PS4, PS1 style controller, but uh, nonetheless, yeah. I mean, I've only played it a little bit in that I can't get past um, the first six minutes of any of those games. Have you tried the remix mode yet? No. It's like a a flash remix of like little blocks from each of the the other stages. Hmm. And it'll take you like two minutes to get through one. And so you just you just fly through like ten blocks of a Mega Man stage, and then 
then it like tells you your score you know a completely fresh spin on like something that i've loved my whole life Mm -hmm. see i've always loved the idea of mega man more than mega man itself because mega man is about pattern recognition and pattern Mm -hmm. memorization and it teaches you how to play as you're playing it so like i never feel like it's unfair i'm just bad at it Mm -hmm. but i really like stories and mega man and mega man x just has this convoluted plot that just i love every part of it because it's ridiculous uh anyways i'll take take a moment before we get into the meat and potatoes of this feast thank a couple people i'd like to uh, thank aaron voltenson uh for doing all the cool graphics that you'll find on uh retrovolve and uh uh, halfglassgaming.com that accompany every episode i'd like to thank 2xaa and of course wheelie Never a third wheel um, in this podcast. Contributing killer music. Of course, we're on, uh, you know, Retro Vault, like I said. Uh, it's full of, chock full of uh, great articles. Um, I read them sometimes when I'm on the potty. Obviously, iTunes, Stitcher, we're always there. And when we come back from the break, we're going to get into some Mega Man stuff. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. Mandy, where do you fall on Mega Man? I mean, I never got super into Mega Man. Mm-hmm. I'm not very good at it. Not popular in Canada? Or... <laughs> I actually played a lot of Kokoron, which is okay. sort of feels like a Mega Man ripoff, but it was made by the director of the original Mega Man game, who incidentally was not Kiji Inufune. Hmm. Who, who was the director on the first Mega Man game? Akita Kiramura. He directed Mega Man 1 and 2. And he directed Kokoron as well. Yeah, so Kokoron might look like a Mega Man ripoff at first glance, but really it's just the type of game Akira Kitamura was into making at that time. Uh, he's no longer developing games, so who knows what he would be making now. What was that on? Uh, it was on the Famicom. It was never released in the U.S. Okay. Uh, Taper in Pajamas comes to you and it's like, hey, let's have some dreams. You can have any kind of dream you want because I'm awesome. And then you you create a character. This is actually the first game that ever had a character creator. Really? Yes. So like you make you know, a Gundam with Godzilla for a head that throws pencils as weapons. <laughs> oh, okay. And then, like, you pick your dreams. So, like, my favorite level is the Milk Sea, uh-huh. where it's pirates on a sea of milk and there are all these food items. Hmm. That would start smelling bad really fast. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it's it's a fun level to play. And, like, the color scheme is, like, all pinks and purples and light blues. But eventually, like, as you get far in, like, you find out the Taper is an evil god who eats dreams. So he wanted you to have these cool dreams so he could eat them <laughs> and take over the world. Wow. And this game only existed in Japan. Yeah. It it's like really a... fun. But, I mean, it's Mega Man. Yeah. It, it plays a guy like Mega Man. But for some reason, I've been able to spend way more time with Coco around than Mega Man. And I think it's because of the character creator and I like throwing flowers at things and yeah. having a robot head and a ninja body. <laughs> uh, Josh has played a little Coco Run. I think it's it's really cool. No, Mega Man is sort of the Astro Boy version of Coco Run. I was going to say, who'd win in a fight? Astro Boy, Mega Man. Well, Mega Man, probably. Mm. But I mean, it, it, Mega it, Man is, is, is an Astro Boy ripoff, really. Mm. It, it is commonly said, but it's not verifiable that mm-hmm. Capcom had the license to Astro Boy and they lost it, and that's why they made Mega Man in the first place. Hmm. Yeah, there really are a lot of similarities between Astro Boy and Mega Man. For people who aren't familiar with Astro Boy, the premise is basically that a robot boy fights evil robots to help humanity. Which is also the premise of Mega Mega Man. Only Mega Man had the additional thing where he had to fight the robot bosses in, in a particular order. Well, I mean, I guess he didn't have to, but one of the things that was so innovative about the original NES Mega Man games was that the player was given the selection of all eight bosses right up front, and you could, you know, play the stages in any order you wanted. However, Whenever you beat a boss, you would steal that boss's power and there would be another boss that was weak to that power. And so part of the fun of playing the original Mega Man games was 
trying to figure out the best order to, to beat all the bosses in so that you could, you know, beat one boss and then use that weapon against the next boss and so on. Going back to Kogoran, that game did let you tackle levels in any order, but there wasn't a sort of hidden mechanic where you had to figure out the proper order. It was just a do what you want to do sort of thing. How many Mega Man games are there? Uh, well, it depends on how you are defining a Mega Man game. Like, I guess Mega Man would be in the title. You're still, so, yeah, you're still not I mean, really you're, narrowing it down. Really, so. like, <laughs> really not. They, Capcom was not strict with that license. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there are Taiwanese educational Mega Man really? games. There are probably about 30 Mega Man mobile games mm-hmm. that haven't been released in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And even when you're looking at uh, games that were released on either handheld or major consoles, uh, you're still looking at, uh, and released in America, you're still looking at like five or six different series that use Mega Man as the title, but are not similar. So I guess basically like you got your Mega Man character or some sort of iteration of that. I guess he changes at some point uh well so there, there's 10 uh in the classic series which is you know just a blue robot shooting power pellets at mm-hmm. robot masters mm-hmm. uh I'm you wa- should fight pac-man because he has he, his last name is man and he could eat the the yeah it's like he's pellets. shooting them he's just eating right. them right <laughs> and, and then when you beat him you uh get the power to eat other robot masters bullets yeah <laughs> the next enemy in that boss order is definitely pizza man <laughs> So the uh, first 10 Mega Man come out before X? No. Uh, Mega Man X came X and out. X 7 came out like close together. I don't remember yeah. which that's one like came PS1 first. Yeah, that's like PS1 era? No, that's, that's Super Nintendo. Super yeah, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Yeah. So okay. X, uh, X2, and X3. The conversation is so confusing. It really is. <laughs> Already. Uh, right. No, it totally is. Uh, and then we start getting into the weird bullshit like Mega Man Battle Network. You sent your fighting robot into the internet or something and gave him cards. Is this kind of like a Pokemon thing? I like how you said Pokemon and not Pokemon. (laughs) Fitting for Mega Man theme stuff. After Pokemon came out, pretty much every big Japanese developer was sort of trying to come up with their own take of it. Like Namco, Bandai put out Digimon, Tecmo put out Monster Rancher. So Capcom was a little more original and they came up with Battle Network. So I've actually never played the Battle Network games. Um... I'm not even sure what they're all about, to be honest. The Mega Man Battle Network is basically the continuity is that Dr. Light was doing more development than Dr. Wily, and Mm -hmm. so everything is connected to the internet all the time. Mm -hmm. So everybody is just always permanently online, and like the whole world is the internet, and you're fighting viruses. Is it called the internet? Uh, It's called the net. It's not the movie starring Sandra Bullock. It's a bad joke, Josh. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you have to fight viruses, but then like you collect cards that you can use. It's sort of a combination of an action and tactical mm-hmm. battle system. Sure. Yeah, and like I know there's one or two other Mega Man series that have nothing to do with Mega Man or Mega Man X. No, Mega Man Legends takes place like Legends, way in the, <laughs> the distant, the distant future. Yeah. I love Legends because it's like. Legends was actually a really innovative game mm-hmm. for its time. It was, you know, a 3D game, and it's probably the first game to ever include lock-on targeting, mm. which, you know, a lot of people associate with Ocarina of Time, yeah. but uh, Mega Man Legends did it before Ocarina of Time came out. What was that on? Uh, PS1. Okay. Did, did, did they have anything on the... Nintendo 64. Yeah, Legends got re-released for the 64. Okay. When they ported Mega Man Legends to Nintendo 64, they actually changed the name to Mega Man 64. I guess they went through a bunch of name changes for a time. They were calling it Mega Man Neo, and then they were calling it Mega Man Nova, and eventually just went with plain old Mega Man 64. I mean, I don't really get it why they didn't just stick with Legends, but that's what they did. Do you think maybe it just was like, didn't sell very well on the PlayStation or something? I mean, I know a lot of Mega Man games had kind of a rocky uh, start and a lot of them only got made because KG and Infune like begged Capcom. (laughs) 
I mean, it's possible. It seems like Mega Man Legends sold pretty well. The one theory I have, which is hilarious to me, is I dug up a quote of Capcom USA's uh, then-president, Bill Gardner, when he was talking about the upcoming N64 games, and he said that he thought it was a different game from the one that was coming out for PlayStation. So, like, maybe it was just different <laughs> localization teams, and they just both came up with their name. And Mega Man Legends is just the one that stuck. Like they, like both teams didn't realize they were working on the same game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, what a bummer! But you play as like Mega Man Volnut, and it, he's I'm like sorry, Mega Man Walnut. <laughs> yeah, Mega Man Volnut. Volnut. He's uh. He's German. <laughs> uh, it's like a a Wind Waker type world where the whole world's flooded, hmm. and so he's like hanging out in this. Um, Not a good world for a robot. I mean, not so much. Unless you're no. one of the underwater robots like Bubble Man. Oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> right. No, and so there's like there's like these air pirate like these air pirates that uh-huh, like fly course. around in in their airships and yeah. stuff. And so you're like you're like digging in these like archaeological digs or whatever, and you're trying to dig up basically like mechanical parts <laughs> and, and then uh you know, fighting off these pirates. It's huh. su- super cool. I freaking love legends so much. I must have played it at a time when I, like, wasn't capable of appreciating it, because I remember not really liking it. Hmm. But I think I wanted it to be more like a JRPG, and it really wasn't. I played it within the past couple of months, and I I got sucked right back into mm-hmm. it. It was like, you know, I was worried it wouldn't hold up, but mm-hmm. uh, it, for, for me, at least, it still retains, like, a really good percentage of its charm. I think uh, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Reverend. Um, I believe they have uh, more of a firm grasp, I guess you could say, on the overall story or continuity of the Mega Man series, of which I know very little. The thing about the Mega Man continuity, whatever, is that it's much like the Zelda games, where obviously they planned on making these games first, and then they went, well, shit, how do we define a story? So, like, there is some kind of continuity, but a lot of it goes back and forth, and it's it's really bizarre. Uh, but the basics of it is Dr. Light and Dr. Wily make some robots. Mm-hmm. And the idea is that these robots are supposed to help humanity. And then Dr. Wily uh, decides to steal these robots and program them to kill the shit out of humanity. Uh, and then Mega Man, uh, who is Rock in... in his Japanese name. Rock? Rock. Rock Man. Rock Rock Man. Man. Oh, okay. Uh And uh, he has a sister named Roll uh, because (laughs) Japan loves their puns. Yeah. Rock says, you know, turn me into a fighting robot so that I can take on these robots. And that's that's where it starts. None of this is actually in the first game. Mm -hmm. Uh, They came up with it later. Mm -hmm. But... That's the plot. By like the fourth Mega Man game, they started actually putting effort into being like, okay, how do these stories tie into each other? Mm -hmm. I'm really amused by Mega Man 6. Dr. (laughs) Dr. X is like, I'm going to throw a tournament for the robots and so they can all come and fight. And then the eight winners of the tournament, he kidnaps and (laughs) makes them fight for him. So he's like, I I ensured I got the best robots in the world before I made this plan come to life. And then he's not going to actually make the robots. And then I'm trying to remember how that goes. Like, was Dr. X actually Dr. Wily? Yes. Yes. Really? So he just puts on like a... He has a beard. Mm-hmm. He's like, but Wiley doesn't start with X. Exactly. <laughs> They'll never figure it out. Yeah, his business cards are Wiley crossed out by an <laughs> X. <laughs> it's actually Mr. X. What? He he wasn't a doctor. He was just Mr. X. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was, I was saying Dr. X this whole time. But yeah, you're right. It was Mr. X. And then he was Dr. Wiley. He was a doctor. He just was pretending not to be a doctor. Doctor pretending to be a layman. Well, so, and then you get into Mega Man X, Mm -hmm. uh, which is the series that started on the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. uh, And that takes place a hundred years later, where some archaeologist, I think Dr. Kane, uh, is doing a dig and he finds the remains of Dr. Light's lab and he finds X in a, in a capsule. There's some 
reploid virus going around that takes these robots that were originally perfectly happy working with humanity and they decide, eh, fuck humans. X wants to help humanity by fighting these robots. And he's not Rock Man? Uh, he's not Rock. It's, he is he's it, X. It, yeah, I think it's it's like a different model of, of the Mega Man right. mm-hmm. robot. Wait, so his name was Rock Man? Originally, before he came here and he was Mega Man? Yes. Is there an enemy named Rock Man in any of the games that you fight that throws rocks at you or anything? I don't think so. The guy the guy who throws rocks at you in the first game is called Guts Man. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I've got the guts to pick up these rocks and throw them at you. <laughs> yes, that, that, that is true. And I'm a man, apparently, so... Huh. Should, do, like, why is it man instead of robot? Yeah. Do they have souls? Oh. <laughs> Well, well, I'll get PS4s. Shit just got real. I, yeah, yeah, right. There's some discussion about <laughs> that. I actually know why they use man at the end of everybody's name in the Mega Man games. It's a reference to American superhero comics. It was KJ Unofune's idea. Uh, it's a play on names like Batman and Superman and such and such. In Japan, they use the English names. So calling him Rock Man sounds like they're trying to make him sound like an American comic book hero. I don't know. Do these games even need a story? I mean, ultimately, you're just a guy shooting robots, right? I mean, well, I think the stories can be really fun uh, when they're well utilized. Like, mm-hmm. for example, Zero, one of the more popular characters from the X series, he's the red guy with the long, bishy hair and and the beam saber. Uh, and oh, as sorry. opposed to Proto Man, as opposed what? to Proto, who's Man, a completely different a character, completely different character, yeah. and has a great whistle and has a great. Josh thought that Proto Man and Zero were the same character mm. until today. I thought. Like, for some reason, because I played these games as a kid, and, like, because of, you know, the red and the 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 low bit count, like, I've always thought Proto Man and Zero were the same character. Yeah. And I just learned today that this child, this thing I carried over from my childhood was completely wrong, and my whole life is changing <laughs> because of it. And I don't know if I like it. Yeah. Zero's origin story, his real life origin story, not his in-game origin story, is hilarious to me. Yeah, the story of how Capcom created Zero is is pretty great. When Mega Man X was in development, Capcom wanted to redesign Mega Man. KJ Inofune was supposed to be the one who redesigned Mega Man, and since he wasn't working on Mega Man yet when the character was first designed, this was like his big chance to create his own take on Mega Man. Yeah, a lot of people attribute uh, KG Inafune as the creator of Mega Man, but that's not technically true. And even even uh, Inafune has has said like, no, I didn't create Mega Man. He um he came in kind of late on the process of creating the first Mega Man game and uh, gave a lot of feedback that shaped the game, but he didn't actually create the character that was uh, yeah, that was Akira Kitamura. Right. So anyway, zero. <laughs> yeah, zero. So. And Inafune quickly realized that nobody is going to like the redesigned Mega Man because that's just, that's not how gamers operate. Everybody was going to complain about how it was so much worse than the original Mega Man. So what he wound up doing is creating a brand new character that he deliberately made to be cooler than Mega Man. He gave him all the coolest scenes in the game, and then that was the creation of Zero. And so his idea was that he wouldn't be the one to redesign Mega Man, but it didn't matter because the character everybody would like was the character he designed. And I mean, it worked. Zero is super popular. People are obsessed with him. That's because people think he's Proto Man. (laughs) They're like, I really like that guy's whistle. (laughs) Mega Man were games that I kind of skipped over when I was a kid. It wasn't until you gave me that collection that I really spent time sitting down and actually trying to... I can't play those games for shit, man. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. Uh, No, I I can't either. I have beaten one Mega Man game, though, and that'd be Mega Man 3. Mm -hmm. For me, like, Mega Man 3 seems like the point at which they, they really nailed down the Mega Man formula. Mega Man 1 doesn't even have like the eight robot format. It's like it was like six robots mm-hmm. and it's buggy and kind of glitchy and mm-hmm. and whatever. It's still a great game. The music is is it phenomenal. It looks fantastic on the collection. I think they really iterated upon that with Mega Man 2 and then 3 you know, was another leap forward. And I feel like, you know, 3 wasn't I wouldn't say it's a perfect game because it mm-hmm. definitely has some flaws. Hmm. 
The development process for Mega Man 3 is kind of interesting because it's the first time Capcom like really gave them the money and manpower to make the kind of Mega Man game they mm-hmm. wanted to make. Is it, at this point, was it more of a popular um, sort of franchise? I mean, like, did they see that this could kind of go off into the future? Yeah. Well, the first Mega Man game actually didn't do very well. Mega Man 2 happened because Keiji Inafune basically bugged people at Capcom until they let him make it. <laughs> and uh, he had to, they had four months to work on it and they had to do it while they were making a game called Pro Baseball Murder Mystery which was a (laughs) satire of baseball because I guess at almost every game coming out that time was either a baseball game or like a murder solving game and so they just combined them to Hmm. be funny. And and as we know the uh, Pro Baseball Murder Mystery just skyrocketed in popularity and just you know became a worldwide phenomenon so really Capcom was right in how they utilize their resources. Yeah, we're still talking about that game today. Yeah, right. We, yeah. we, Mega we, Man? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it poses the question, who killed first? <laughs> uh, no, no. What killed first? <laughs> who killed the shortstop? Ah. But um, Akira Kitamura, who directed the first two Mega Man games, left to found his own company. So Keiji Inafune really got to control the development. And Mega Man 2 was a huge success. It suddenly had the resources and the manpower. So this is when he could really make the type mm-hmm. of Mega Man game he probably wanted to make since he started working on Mega Man in mm-hmm. the first place. But he originally didn't develop the concept of Mega Man, right? No, he, he came into Mega Man after a bunch of stuff had right. already been done. I'd always kind of just identified him, I guess, with the character. Yeah, I think like... everybody, because, you know, that's his passion. He's fought harder for Mega Man than anybody, mm-hmm. but he wasn't the creator of Mega Man, and he wasn't working on the series mm. until partway through the first game's development. He's more like the godfather of Mega Man than the father of Mega Man. Or like the cool stepdad. <laughs> right. comes in, you know, kid's already on track to go into Harvard, and he just sort of nudges him a little bit, and it takes all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Puzzle 3, massive budget, huge success, destroys everybody's minds, right? And I mean, I think they still had some weird stuff because of the Mega Man boss creation contest. Mm-hmm. What is that? Most of the Mega Man games have had boss creation contests where fans could design bosses from the game and then Capcom would pick the ones they liked best and mm. put them in the game. Most of them were Japan only, but um, there were two bosses designed by uh, North American Mega Man <laughs> fans. Which bosses? That was Nightman and then Windman. <laughs> Nightman. Now, he, if, for me, he's better known um, to fight Dayman. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. So he's better known to fight Dragon Man Cry, right. and, and save Princess Man. Mm-hmm. Does he have a shovel? I don't know. <laughs> that would be awesome if he did. <laughs> Wouldn't it? What kind of a character, by name only, what would you guys create? Well, obviously Patriot Man, if well, I make it a sure North American. Wind Man was made by a Canadian, but oh. I'd have Yeah, well, to... of course Wind Man was made by a Canadian. Yeah. I have uh, those Nintendo Power issues oh, yeah. the, with the costume contest. They had some pretty cool designs that they rejected, and then there was like Mega Woman and stuff still got published in Nintendo Power, even though Capcom would never use it. Mm-hmm. I would make Man Man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the kid who made Wind Man, he, they, he wrote his name on the entry form, and he wrote his handwriting was so bad that they spelled it wrong when they mailed his stuff to let him know he won. So he didn't know that he won until the Nintendo Power issue came out. <laughs> Some other guy across the country gets the letter, and he's like, what the hell? <laughs> Deborah, are you seeing this Mega Man fellow? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was at a friend's uh, place. She moved, recently moved to a new apartment, and her apartment building has an arcade just in the commons area that is free to use. Wow. Uh, so, you know, naturally, I'm like, let's let's go see. And, and amongst the boxes of, you know, pinball games and the Area 51 game, etc., there was a generic box in which was Mega Man Power Fighters 2, mm. which I had not even known existed until right that moment. Uh, but I played it, and then I looked up information. Uh, apparently, there were two arcade fighters that were Mega Man games. Mm-hmm. You got to choose either Mega Man, Proto Man, uh, who is still not Zero. But still has a fantastic whistle. He still mm-hmm. has a fantastic whistle. Or uh, Treble, or uh, not Treble, Bass. And it's an arcade fighter. Like, there are like six boss robots you fight, and when you beat one, you take their powers, and mm-hmm. then you can use their powers against... You you know, the next boss. 
Are the stages like um, game? No, there's no stages. It's just it's you know you pick the the boss that you're fighting and then boom you're there. You're like you're fighting the boss. But I mean like the backgrounds for these fun ah. arenas. Is it like oh that's from Mega Man Four or? No, it's it's um, based on the boss you're fighting. So mm. you know much like the Street Fighter Two uh, background stages would be like you know based on the character somehow. Mm. Same thing. And then after you beat the 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 boss monsters, you know you got to fight the the Wily ship, and then you got to fight Wily, mm. and then you got a little ending which. Apparently, the endings of Power Fighters 2, which is what I played, uh, are considered canonical, which is entertaining because according to Power Fighters 2, Proto Man has some flaw in his battery pack that will cause him to die quickly, but he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't want to let Dr. Light fix it. And I'm like, I didn't know that. That's entertaining. Mandy, fact? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Josh brought up, and I think he's probably right, the uh, battery flaw probably comes from the whistle that mm-hmm. Proto Man had. Well, the problem is, is that he's not using Duracell. <laughs> right. I mean... No, that- the, the whistle the whistle drains a lot of battery power. That, that's why Dr. Light didn't put it in, you know, later uh, renditions of, 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 mon- of robots. Yeah, Proto Man's the only one that whistles, and he's the one with the, the battery malfunction. Mm-hmm. I mean, just goes to show you, it's a cool feature, mm-hmm. but it's kind of impractical. Mm-hmm. And it's not worth the battery drain. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's why Proto Man didn't want Dr. Light fixing them. He's like, you're not taking my whistle, you son of a bitch. So the bosses in this game, are they new robots? Uh, not all of them. Because, like, one of them was Cut Man and there was Elec Man. Mm. Uh, so, like, some of them might have been new. I'm, I'm not familiar with the whole repertoire of Mega Man boss robots. Mm-hmm. So I can't, like, I can't tell you if any of them were new. I, 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 I kind of think it would be a cool game, like a Power Stone or maybe even, like, a Smash Bro, where you just got all the Mega Man characters from, like, the main core games you know the bosses you can control them kind of battle arena style and just uh duke it out there's a fan-made game called Mega Man 8-bit deathmatch that's Mega Man but reimagined in like the doom engine oh really and so it's you know a 3d first person shooter but you play as Mega Man characters Mm -hmm. and you like jump into these stages that are very very obviously based on stages from the games and blast away at each Mm other it's something that I played a long time ago, but I looked it up more recently, and I saw they were still updating it as of, like, April of 2015. It's had a long life and a strong community, it sounds mm-hmm. like, and mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of want to jump back into it and, you know, mess around. And That's kind of what makes me sad that Mega Man as a franchise is essentially dead at this point. I mean, like, Capcom is probably going to try to put something else Mega Man out because it's money, Mm -hmm. but Kaiji Inafune is no longer working for Capcom and, you know, releasing his own uh, game that is, you know, the spiritual successor to Mega Man Mighty Number 9. But so, like, Mega Man as a franchise is essentially gone, which makes me sad because there's obviously so much community love for the, you know, the big blue robot. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just... It's a great set of games. Like, you can't find a better basic game premise setup than Evil Doctor creates eight weapons of mass destruction and you, the one, you know, lone robot, have to go and beat them all. Dr. Wily was based off of Albert Einstein. Well, the thing is, people don't necessarily understand that the perception of Albert Einstein in Japan is really different from the perception of Albert Einstein in the Western world, because Einstein is the one who wrote the letter urging for the creation of the atomic bomb. But obviously, in Japan, people don't see him as this, Mm -hmm. just this amazing genius, you know? He's a guy capable of terrible destruction, and Mm -hmm. so... Attributing mad scientist qualities to Albert Einstein from a Japanese perspective makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It it should make sense from a Western perspective, too. I mean, just because we like to pretend we didn't utterly decimate millions of lives by dropping radiation bombs on them doesn't mean we didn't do that. (laughs) I will always just remember the quote from, you know, right after the first atomic bomb test Mm -hmm. was successful. Today, we are all sons of bitches. It's funny. uh, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I was watching uh, With Bob and David on uh, Netflix, the new Mr. Show kind of offshoot. Wait, they're doing a new sketch comedy show? It's on Netflix right now, but uh, they're doing a bit 
where Einstein, he like comes up with E equals MC squared. He's like, yes, that's it. I've done it. And he meets like a flapper girl and she's super cute and he's into her and she sticks her tongue out at him in like a playful way. And it like bothers him because he can't mimic that. So then he goes back to the drawing board and he's destroying his lab because he can't figure out how to stick out his tongue in the appropriate way. And finally he does it, but then he can't find the girl and he just has to tell somebody. So he pushes a kid out of the way. He was getting his portrait taken. And they take a picture of him instead sticking out his tongue and it becomes the iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Flash forward to like some college dorm where kids are getting stoned and it's like a poster on the wall. It's pretty hilarious. But so back to uh, the topic at hand. Um, who's excited for this mighty number nine? I think I backed it at like $80 because wow. I was I was so excited about it. Mm. And um, You're money, man. Right. I, I'm really excited about it because I, I feel like, you know, Inafune finally gets to just do what he wants. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Mighty Number no. 9 is sort of like a spiritual reboot of the Mega Man franchise. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, cl- and he's not even trying to hide it. And I mean, we've talked about how Mega Man was kind of an Astro Boy ripoff. Astro Boy is called Mighty Adam mm-hmm. in Japan. Mm. So he's even taking the Mighty from Astro Did Capcom kind of go after him with any sort of litigation? Or? No. Now, uh... Big Event Legends gets to live on as the Red Ash franchise. You're right, yeah. Uh, there was some sort of a stink about that uh, Kickstarter campaign, wasn't it? For me, I can I can understand being upset because Mighty Number no. 9 keeps getting delayed and keeps mm-hmm. getting delayed. And before Mighty Number no. 9 was put out, he started funding Red Ash, mm-hmm. which is his next game. And then Mighty Number no. 9 got delayed another, you know, six months. And it's like, come on, man, what's going on? You need to finish this game first. I mean, Red Ash was just a really badly managed Kickstarter. They launched two Kickstarters, one for a Red Ash anime and one for a Red Ash video game. And they were really bad about updating it with information and about making people publicly aware That's not it. really too bad, because, like, I, I knew about uh, Mighty Number no. 9 continuing to get delayed, uh, and the fact that, it, it, like, he was also trying to kickstart another game and develop that, like, I, this is not the same thing as working for a AAA game developing studio, dude. You're, you're directly getting money from the fans, and it's completely reasonable for them to go, we would like you to not continue to delay this project to work on a different one. Well, the thing is, well, Mighty Number no. 9 is done. And the the reason it got delayed was because one of the stretch goals was online multiplayer, and their online multiplayer infrastructure was li- living up to their standards. Personally, what I think they should have done is just launch the game with the promise of a free multiplayer patch later. And you know, in that case, I can I can sort of because you know then they're they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. Because so they delayed the game, and what happened happened with everybody getting annoyed. And but if they had released the game and said no, no, we promise we'll we'll give a free patch to fix this later, people would have been equally annoyed and talked about how they would never see the patch because the internet is horrible and that's what people do. But um, it, it was a stretch goal, and that's the thing. Is like right? No, it's and like I get that. put out the game first and then put out the stretch goals. Right, later. and that's reasonable. Just to clarify, some of the red ash kerfuffle people were upset that they were starting a new campaign for a game having then already delayed mighty number nine um but also they had gotten outside well they got outside funding before the kickstarter ended which is good because it failed but also they were seeking external help from a studio called hide which is a secret game development company that's worked on a ton of games but they keep themselves in the shadow so they don't sort of cause confusion amongst people who play the games and say, well, who is this company? I thought it was Comcept that was making this game. Uh, So people are like, who is this company? (laughs) We don't know who they are, and they're asking for money. And uh, yeah, hide, right. I mean, (laughs) that's a little bit of the backstory on that. The anime uh, got funded, though. The anime. The anime got funded on Kickstarter. For? For For Red, for Red Ash. Okay, I thought you talk about the old anime uh, Mega Man. Cartoon. Oh yeah, there was a uh, there was at least one released here in the U.S. Uh, a Mega Man cartoon, which I actually watched when it was on television. It's fucking ridiculous by like our standards of quality now, mm-hmm. but for what it was, which was you know an early '90s action cartoon for kids, I thought it was you know well done enough. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, probably because it was 85. percent 
percent puns. Um, <laughs> it it really was eighty five percent puns, and not even good puns. No. So right up Julian's alley, right up my alley. Just, well, they're still uh, they're still putting out the comic book. I did not even know a comic book existed. Yeah, it's it's. Still you mean they're still out. putting it Published out? Published by Archie it, Comics. Like it's been running for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty years. Or so? Oh no, not that long. I've heard it's really good, but mm-hmm. I don't uh, read it. But it's been running for a little over four years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing they do that I think is super funny is that Mega Man's actual name is Rock. Like, that's his civilian name. And then Mega Man is his superhero name. And the same thing is true with Proto Man. His real name is Blues. <laughs> so he just walks around in his skivvies or, uh, or I'm sorry, not in his skivvies, in his it civilian is, attire is. with his skivvies underneath it. Yes. I, I presume it's like the 90s uh, Ninja Turtles cartoon where he just puts on a fedora and a trench coat. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's exactly what I was picturing in my head. Yeah. I mean, puts he's already got his and he superhero undies on the outside. Yeah, yeah so. that's true. For, for Proto Man, or Blues, I guess, since that's a civilian attire, it must be really difficult because every time he walks into the room, that damn whistle plays <laughs> and people know that it's him. That's that's where he gets the whistle from is the, the Blues. Yeah, right. No, that well, makes no, see, so what sense. What he does is the mask that he just clears his throat all the time. Oh, right. Walks in <laughs> <coughs> and nobody hears the... <laughs> Yeah, guys, like I gotta get that damn bell fixed on my door. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sounds like, like this proto man guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like an ordinary man, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, the other hilarious thing about the '90s cartoon was that Mega Man could steal people's powers and use their powers, but oftentimes that was just represented by like a different colored blast. In the the Mega Man animated series, Roll looks surprisingly like Zelda from the Zelda cartoon. She does. But, you know, that's because she's another skinny blonde chick, so... Because 90s animators only knew how yeah. to draw one woman. Yeah. Right, they only she knew how to draw also, skinny blonde she chicks. She looks like Rogue and... Uh, <laughs> right. You know, I mean... I liked the the Mega Man cartoon show for what it was. Mm-hmm. He was pretty buff in there. He I, looked like a younger version of Bad Boxer Mega Man. <laughs> he, he did. <laughs> he for, totally did. For people who are unfamiliar, the first Mega Man game had box art that was so bad, Capcom actually officially recognized Bad Box Art Mega Man as a character, and they put him in Street Fighter X Tekken. Really? And he's actually called Bad Box Art Mega Man. That mm-hmm. is his official name. I remember looking at the uh, box art of the first Mega Man game in a uh, video rental store mm-hmm. when I was a child looking for a game to rent. And like I looked at it and I didn't even want to play it because I was like, the fuck even is this? Yeah. No game that good it should have box art that bad. And I think that was even the to the consumer. It was like, no game with box art this bad will be worth playing. Right? In his backstory, they gave him for the game they made his name Digger. <laughs> I mean, it's as if they just allowed some five-year-old kid to have at a box of uh, colored pencils. And were like, you know, his suit is predominantly two shades of blue. We don't really have yellow. I want him yellow! Well, that's right. like, he has a gun arm. <laughs> no, no, he has a gun! Because yeah, guns are cool! <laughs> like, the the Digger thing is interesting because that's like, he, it feels like a Mega Man Legends reference. That, that's what he grows up to be. <laughs> <laughs> Is a as a Mega pudgy middle aged guy. The Mega Man Two box art. He looks like he's more of like a riot police. He's got <laughs> right, and and he's still got a gun. Yeah, instead of a gun a, arm. Kind of looks like he's got boobs. He's a, he has a very curvaceous body. What's up with that foot? Is that <laughs> he, how you plant your foot when you're shooting a gun? Uh, it's absolutely not. I can promise you. He's you he's use, practicing you. really poor aim control right well, there. He's got his eyes closed too. I think so, the guy. Uh, Driving the boxer, yeah, well, no, he just wanted to look at women in leotards. Yeah, and right. So he's like, well, he uses this woman in a leotard as a reference picture is for that Mega Man. Wily, is he like trying to pants the guy with the drill hand? What's going on there? I think trying he's to just... see if there's a woman in a leotard <laughs> in that outfit. <laughs> yeah, right. Kiji Inafune just seems like a really cool guy to me with a really great sense of humor in spite of everything. Mm-hmm. There's uh, this game called Sweet Fuse. It uh, is set in an amusement park owned by Keiji Inafune, and it's his video game amusement park that he made to share his love of video games with the rest of the world. And you play as his... It's his niece. Disneyland. Yes, it's Keiji Inafune's Disneyland, and you play as Keiji Inafune's niece... 
uh, Tara shows up to the amusement park mm-hmm. and takes uh, you and then like eight hot guys hostage. And so you have to work with the hot guys to solve puzzles and rescue your uncle, Keiji Inafune, and maybe also romance one of the hot guys. <laughs> and I mean, like, he's in there and he's wearing, like, this ridiculous top hat and suit and, like, his how, very Mickey Mouse-ish outfit. How, how can I play this game? It's on PSP and Vita. Okay. It's super fun. It's called Sweet Fuse, and I highly recommend it. It is hilarious. Can, can I buy it on the PlayStation Network? Yeah, it's on PSN. It's okay. like 10 bucks. Aside from, like, Mega Man, I mean, what else? I mean, does he work on anything else? Yeah, he actually um, worked on the Dead Rising series. Oh, really? He worked on um, Ninja Gaiden uh, Yaiba. Oh, oh. The, the zombie Ninja Gaiden yeah, game. Yeah, no, it's uh, Koei Tecmo that did Yaiba, developed by Comcept, Team Ninja, and Spark Unlimited. Inafune also created the Onimusha series. I actually got to meet Inafune when he was working on Yaiba. Mm. Um, Were you drunk? No, I was sober. It's actually a really great story. The year before I was covering E3 for the outlet I was working for, my company was so cheap that they put us up in like the cheapest hostel they could find. <laughs> it was like in, in kind of the shady part of downtown LA and it was a really long walk. I want to say it was like a mile and a half or two miles from E3 and we had to wow. walk every day and it was kind of a shitty situation, but we, we spent a majority of our time just working on articles in the, in the lobby, which what, what they called the lobby was actually a room on like the third or fourth floor that was locked and you had to use your, your uh, room key to get into it and it had like Wi-Fi. And so a bunch of people would just hang out there and we were up, we we're there kind of late one night and these Japanese schoolgirls came in and one of the guys in the group was like, Hey, I speak some Japanese. Like I'm going to, you know, practice and, and talk with these girls. And so he, like his introduction to these girls was like, Hey, I hear you have a lot of uh, killer bees in Japan. And like, y- y- there's a bunch of people working on computers or like reading the newspaper or whatever. Everyone stopped what they were doing and just looks at him. And, like, <laughs> it was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> and, you know, everyone was super confused. Yeah, what? Like, Haven't you ever seen a guy talk to schoolgirls about killer bees? Come on. <laughs> and so it was like, what? what is this guy doing? And so the next year when we went to E3, the three of us who were in that room at the time had a joke that was like, okay, if we if we meet anyone who's like a prominent game developer, we have to ask them, how do you feel about killer bees? Just just out of left field. And my first appointment of the day was to see Yaiba, which was in, in you know, still being developed at the time. And I didn't know in a few was working on it. And E3 is super loud. And I walk in, it's like, you know, nine in the morning, whenever whenever they first open the doors uh, to E3. And I walked in and it was it's it's super loud and the, the guys who are kind of leading me through the uh, the booth are like, oh yeah, you know, you've got an opportunity to have an interview with Mr. And like, do you want to do it? And I was like, sure. And I had no idea. Like they kept saying it like, oh, like, and I, I couldn't understand what they were saying. Because well, I mean, probably because they kept covering their mouth. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> it was it was so loud. And was, I had no idea who I was going to meet. And so I walk into the room and there's, you know, KG and Afina. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> there he is. You, you've got to go through with this, man. you gotta, you got to ask the question. And so I, <laughs> I, I did. You ask, swore a blood oath. <laughs> I did ask KG and Afina how he felt about killer bees. The question had to go through translators. And his answer to come back through translators and the translators didn't even know how to how to <laughs> translate this They're like we this is this is a question we're not prepared for <laughs> and finally we got through and he talked he he worked on i don't remember the name of it but he worked on a mobile game about shooting giant bugs and so he talked about that but you know it's is great that he was like just such a good sport about all of it and, mm-hmm. and everything. And it was just a, a cool experience, like walking in and, mm-hmm. you know, there, there he is. And I do have to give you props for actually going through was asking Kajana Fune about killer bees. Hmm. That was, you know, that was ballsy. Right? So what Clearly. are those Japanese schoolgirls doing there? I think they were there as part of like an exchange program or something. Mm. And it was over the summer. So I think they had just arrived and they were like trying to practice their English and stuff mm. before before the semester. Inafune worked on Resident Evil 4. 
What did, what did he do was rather than Evil He was Ford. the executive producer, so mm. he probably did not do very much. Mm-hmm. Right. Just sat back and collected the bank. Right. So I'm just curious. What's everyone's favorite robot master? Geralt. <laughs> I don't. I don't think Geralt is is a robot master. Geralt, yeah. man. I like the ice dragon from Kokoron. There you go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Snake man. Why? Because he shoots black sperm. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> He has like he has like the cool like he throws his little it's like almost like bolas but they're snakes mm-hmm. and that's all true and and I don't know I just I just really liked Snake Man's like stage and his mm-hmm. whole like snake gimmick I can see that as a kid I was like, that, that just was kind of badass uh, my favorite robot master is Magnet Man because it was the first level I figured out how to actually get through and beat. Mm. And so I will always remember the feeling of going, ha ha, I finally managed to not die while playing this game. Mm. And it was such a great, wonderful feeling that uh, because of that, Magnet Man has always been my favorite. Cool. Magnet Man 3 just has such good music. It's it so does. good. It really is. Yeah. So, you know, man. Mega Man. It's one of those things that's been around forever. And uh, looking back on it, I, I can't believe I actually ever really played much of it as a child. It seems like a couple of you guys have, and you love it. It's a winding, twisting road of tales and uh, stories and characters and colors, primarily colors. And whistles. And, and whistles. whistles. Well, and I think the point is, is that there's a Mega Man inside of all of us. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what that means, all right? But... Uh, <laughs> It means something to some of you out there. And I want to thank you for joining us for another fun-filled, uh, action-packed adventure. We've uh, clobbered some robots and really just kind of brought it home. So uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Um, enjoy your Snapple Apple and uh, have a good day. And I, I'm just going to let it dangle and, and go forward from there. Um, hey, maybe let's start over. <laughs> 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 you got to take out my dick jokes? You're horrible. <laughs>